about what's going on in the Democratic National Convention. And I think it's important, Todd, that we explain to the people why we're stuck on this subject, because right now our ministry is literally exploding. Uh, we are we just finished in Fresno, California, in the Wilson Theater. We packed out the Wilson Theater, saw hundreds saved and miracles like never before. We're planning the greatest tent crusade we've ever had will be at the Agricultural Center in Tulare, California. It's the first tent crusade taught that we've called Living Proof California. It's a statewide soul winning miracle. But in the midst of it, here we are on firepower talking about Kamala Harris, talking about the DNC, because ladies and gentlemen, it's your children's future. And it's also your spiritual duty to understand what's going on and what God wants you to do. Take it away, Todd. That's right. I want to read something here because I was in prayer the other day, and that's where I really started feeling the Lord say, you can't buy this delusion, this illusion. said, there's so much illusion to cause confusion and delusion. That's their goal. Don't fall for it. I heard the Lord say in my prayer time not to be discouraged. Very, very important for every believer to understand right now, we can't be discouraged. They are really trying to get Christians discouraged right now, and the enemy is using major psychological warfare, total deception and fabrication to try and get us down and feeling defeated. But here's the deal. We're not defeated. We must rise above this, stay in the spirit, understand that much of what we are seeing is not real. It's an illusion. We've got to keep our eyes on Jesus, on truth and righteousness, He's in the boat. Yes, there's a storm around us, but he is with us. Do not let discouragement take root in your heart. Somebody needs to hear this right now. Press in, yep. in the Lord more than ever. And I'm going to do this as well. And we must, we've got to learn to encourage ourselves in Jesus Christ. Satan goes around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he can devour. He masquerades. He is a, he is a liar. We know that. And so those that are given to Satan are, are also given to the same lies. And so, Mario, I believe as we talk about this every week, the spiritual battle that we're in, a major factor of this is to try to wear down the saints. And we cannot get worn down. We've got, we've got to learn. I think in the, in the years ahead, this is going to be such a big deal, is where we need to learn to encourage ourselves, stay in the word, be a prayer warrior, and not let the lies, because that's the whole thing. They want us to think that the tribulation is here. They want us to think we're helpless. And it's, it couldn't be farther from the truth. Mario, you're experiencing healings miracles signs and wonders in your right. meetings you're literally just coming right out of that um right you know the lord is moving he's on the move there there is a revival move of god an undercurrent that i believe is turning into a full-fledged flame in america and that's the only way this country can be saved is to turn back to god so uh we're here to encourage you tonight in the midst of all this delusion and deception right. well here here's how it works back in the day when hypnosis was fashionable you would go to an event where they would hypnotize a person and build a reality. You are now walking through water. You are now near a fire. And the audience would know the reality, but the individual under hypnosis would act out as if everything he was being told is real. You're going to see some videos tonight. We're going to comment on them. And we want you to keep this context of the hypnotic how they believe that what they're saying is true. And in some instances, in the very video yourself, itself, you'll see why it's not true, why it's the opposite of what they're even saying. You know, and what is going on with uh, Kamala Harris's campaign is absolute smoke and mirrors, zero substance, all lies. And the fact of the matter is, that I, as I told you before the show, uh, Todd, when Biden ran for president, they kept him in the basement. That's right. When Kamala Harris is running, they're keeping America in the basement. It's reversed, but that's how it works. And I think we ought to look at that first video right now to give you an example of what's going on. Let's run that. Look how empty those seats are, Todd. Yeah. Now, they're going to tell you this is before it started, but you see the speaker speaking right there. So how is that possible? And there's there's video throughout the entire convention where you can see a lot of empty seats. 
and and it is very clear that it is not like the Republican National Convention in the beginning meetings. Their version of this was was full. That's the, right. The, and uh, and I really feel that is a, a, is a major part of the illusion. But I want to talk about what Satan is doing. The Bible says this about Satan. I want to read these verses. Second Corinthians, starting at a, uh, verse 12 of Second Corinthians 11. But what I do, I will also continue to do, that I may cut off the opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the things of which they boast. I want to stop. He's talking about false prophets. Yeah. So here is what Paul is saying. I respond to lies. I talk against them. When someone tells a lie, and I will continue to do what I'm doing because I have to expose the lie. Now, it says, uh, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no wonder for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. The devil is going to take the campaign of the Democratic Party and make it spiritual. They're going to start talking like Christians, talking like apostles, talking like ministers, taking the moral high ground and saying they are the ones. Already, as you know, they're putting together an an invasion of the evangelical voting bloc and talking to them, saying, you don't love your neighbor, and if you're part of us, and they're paying churches right now. Money from the Democratic National Convention is pouring into churches to seduce and buy ministers and buy votes. But I believe you need to see the lie. You need to see through it, and you need to understand what is going on. That's right. That's right. And and I love how you brought this up because this has been on my heart as we've been thinking about this show is these ministers of the enemy. And, you know, no one I mean, the devil knows the Bible very good, you know, so he knows how to quote the Bible. He knows how to distort the Bible. And that's what a, a lot of folks are being deceived because they don't know the word of God well. And so unfortunately, they hear bits and pieces and they think, oh, yeah, that's the Bible. That That's what they're using right now, Mario, is it, it's the it's the famished saints that haven't really got any Bible and maybe some church that barely teaches the word or one one scripture a week, that's all they really are living on. They don't get into the word themselves, unfortunately. And so there's a lot of folks that are being deceived and are going to be deceived. And that's why the Bible says even the elect will be deceived. But there's going to be some folks, the, the message is going to be so, it's going to sound so good. It's so deceptive that it's it, without discernment from the Holy Spirit, folks are going to be misled. And that's what's happening. When you have a group called Evangelicals for Harris, I mean, there couldn't be a more high, you know, hyperbole. I mean, it's a joke. I mean, how mm-hmm. could you stand for anything? The, the, the Democrat Party right now, their convention, Mario, up in Chicago is giving free abortions outside of the convention. Um, in fact, that, that's what they're pushing. That's their main thing. If you right. notice, and you and I, you and I were talking about this, and I think you want to get into this a little bit more, but their website has like no policy. There's, there's really yeah. their main push is is to kill the babies. If you think yep. about it, you know that that's that's what they're pushing outside and vasectomies and other things like that. Um, yeah, I'll let you go for it on that one. You know uh, what I want to do is get ready for the next video, but I let's let's watch this, uh, not the video, but just uh, observe this. All of you that are watching that have been regular part of firepower need to know this. Our audience is growing. In spite of everything that people have tried, it's growing. We now know that we had 100,000 views on our last episode of firepower. And that's because you're working. And like right now, because of the practical insights you're about to get tonight, you need to share this broadcast right now. You need to share it because this is where it's going. The lies of the enemy have turned this into a close race. I believe that Donald Trump has the votes to win. I believe that. I'm not prophesying it. 
I'm telling you what I believe. However, I believe that the church has never been in greater danger of blowing something uh, before the finish line than this right now. Yeah. And I and I think that's essential. I think we've got to understand, well, we're not going to give up. We're not going to not do what God wants us to do. Go ahead, Todd. Yeah, we, we can't grow weary. You know, as you were talking, I was thinking about, you know, I know you well in your ministry. You're the real deal. You love the Lord with all your heart. There's a major anointing, of course, and calling on Mario Murillo Ministries. And uh, I believe the Lord has called both of us for this time. But if you think about it, there's an anointing for us to speak on this subject matter because we're watchmen. And so God has actually anointed this broadcast. So it's interesting, you know, we can shift from preaching a sermon to being on a broadcast like this, but the anointing is still there. And the reason why is because truth is being spoken and, and it's, it's confirming and affirming. Some of you are out there and there might be a little question in your mind. And you're like, why aren't more pastors sounding the alarm? Why aren't more preachers speaking about these matters? And you see clearly the battle, which is not, uh, uh, you know, one of flesh and blood. It's of strongholds and principalities. This is what we're dealing with. And when we talk about the harvest of souls and having uh, revival meetings around the country and even church services, th that very freedom, I want you to hear this, that very freedom is at stake. When you have a candidate that is full blown like this candidate pushing Marxist you know, theology, Mar Marxist, uh, you know, everything that she's saying, whether it's uh, the pricing in the in the in the grocery stores that she wants to affect. There's video of her saying that she wants to take away private property, or at least she feels that that's something that's plausible from the government. We've already seen eminent domain over the years, but this is a whole other level. Uh, you know, they're, they're basically throwing the Constitution, Mario, and religious liberty and freedoms out the window. And if the church sleeps, sleepwalks into this, it's going to go from persecution light to full-blown persecution in the West. We're seeing it happen across the pond. We're seeing it happen in countries like uh, Australia and Canada where they're a little bit more advanced. But these things are coming to the United States of America too. And so there is an anointing for watchmen. I believe modern-day Davids and Esthers that are rising up for such a time as this. And when you think about the message of Esther, you know, the, the Lord even said, look, you, you can do this or not, or I'll raise up deliverance from somewhere else. But if I do that, you and your family could perish. And I, I really believe, Mario, this is this moment right now where we have, we're not overcome, we're not defeated, but the illusion of defeat to where all of a sudden the polls, you know, plus four, Camilla, this is a woman that never even won a primary. This is a woman that had mm -hmm. no momentum. She had zero momentum. And now we're, we're supposed to believe what the media is selling us. And then you look at, I, I just want to say this one last point. I was watching, uh, just a, I can only take a few minutes of the DNC convention. I'll be honest. You know, I think I tuned in when AOC was on. It was pretty bad. But there was there was about 6,000 people watching, and this was on the mainstream legacy media on one of their streams. And today, uh, during my lunch, I happened to tune in to President Trump that was doing a press conference. He had 8,000 on the same channel, legacy media. So you're telling me that Donald Trump, during a lunchtime press conference, had more, 2,000 more people on the same legacy media than the one that was showing the, the DNC convention. Yeah, and we're going to see a video about that in just a moment. I want to I want to nail something down. Evangelicals for Harris. I, I want to talk to the, the Christians here for a second. The way that God wants to use you is this. You all know someone who's going to vote for Kamala. You all know someone. That person is basing their decision purely on emotion. And if you do ask them directly, do you believe she can lead the free world? All right, I want you to picture Kamala with Putin, with the uh, dictator of North Korea, with yeah. the leaders of Iran, Tur talking to world leaders. Your sons are gonna go to war if she's president. And I can say that emphatically. There is absolutely zero chance that America will not be involved in a war if she becomes president. Zero chance that it will not happen. It will happen. It is inevitable. It, you can write it down. That's one that I, I'll take to the bank. The reason being is the perceived weakness. Number one, 
if America is threatened, Kamala will respond in confusion. If America is attacked, she will not know what to do. And your sons will go to war because of her. And that may frighten the algorithm to death, but that's absolutely true. Next, you need to talk to your friends who are going to vote for her. And if you ask them two questions, Christian friends, ask them two questions. Number one, are you voting for her because of her race? Are you voting for her because she's a woman? See, it doesn't matter to me. Can you imagine if I told you to vote for Donald Trump because he's a man and because he's white? How would that sound? And somehow through the filter and the lens of the manipulated media, the exact opposite of that, to say that about gender and race on the other side is okay to say, but it is just as wrong and just as dangerous. And that's why this smoke and mirrors, the lies that are being told, you got to talk to your friends. You got to be prepared in a calm tone of voice to talk to them. And, and this, the next question is, where do they stand on Christianity? You know the truth about Kamala that they have buried is her persecution of the Catholic Church in California. Right. She repeatedly attacked the church. She does not like Christianity. She hates aspects of the church. Donald Trump, on the other hand, they say all they want about him. He defended the church. Under his administration, the gospel was preached freely in the United States. That's right. And the restrictions were removed. So when you look at these evangelicals, and I, I, I need to just take a moment. When you look at these evangelicals that say, well, you're supposed to love your neighbor. Be quiet for a second, sir, and answer my question. You know what Camilla stands for, and she stood for it all of her life. It's going to attack the church. It's anti-children. It is anti-marriage. It's anti everything that you claim when you read the book of God that you believe in. Explain to me what you're going to do about her and explain to me what's going to happen to you and your future. It'll be the most devastating betrayal of your life that you very much like a snowflake fell for the illusion that it's I've got this Christianity in me that needs to oppose Donald Trump, and you completely negate everything she represents. And it's important and essential in this hour that you realize what your choice means and what it'll do. And so let's run this next video because it'll show you what we're trying to say right now. Yes. Just watching tonight, the diversity of the faces, the youth in the room, yeah. the diversity of people's backgrounds is so striking and different from a couple of weeks ago. And what's also different is the overall message. I mean, Biden and Harris are speaking to the totality of the country, the multicultural, multi-ethnic country <laughs> we live in that's diverse the with a big seats. umbrella and everybody right. is a part of it. And Trump and Vance speak to a tiny, tiny portion of the public. And that's a striking thing. You look at the room, but I think also in the messages we'll hear. 100 million views on X when Elon Musk interviewed Donald Trump. How is that the narrow portion of the United States? I believe that right now the overwhelming majority of Americans support Trump. I believe it. I believe the overwhelming majority do. But I believe that there is a total and complete manipulation of those numbers and there's a manipulation of where people stand you go todd that's right there's a remember don lemon he was a cnn correspondent that was on there for a while there's a video of him you could find it on x which is twitter uh you go on there and you just put don lemon uh jersey and he's walking through atlantic city mario and he's interviewing just random folks this is don lemon i mean we're not talking about some conservative guy and he's putting the mic up to everybody and he's asking who they're voting for. He's going for, you know, African-American people, women, everybody to talk about diversity. 
I think almost every one of them said Donald Trump and they were laughing at him. And, you know, he, he finally says, I got to get out of here. But it's not like he's sitting in the middle of Nashville, mm -hmm. you know, which, you know, he's, he's in Atlantic City, you know. And so uh, that just shows you. And again, it's Don Lemon. I mean, we're using clips tonight from CNN. We're not even using like, uh, right. you know. Right. You know, so that that's what you, we're going to show you another one in just a minute here. I mean, every one of these is like from a liberal, you know, slanted uh, legacy media. And so but this see, just shows you. Yeah, I, I, I don't mean you got me worked up just as they're scanning the empty seat. She's saying these two are speaking to all of America right when they're scanning empty seats in there. And right. you go to it. it. It's just amazing. It's amazing, yep. folks. You got to see what we're talking about. Go ahead, Todd. It's an illusion. I'm, it's I'm an illusion. I think we got to play this next clip because uh, this is uh, CNN. So let's let's play what we're talking about here. But this, this is his moment tonight. This is his moment. Yeah. yeah. Biden is known in his career as being one of the best eulogy givers at funerals, and now they're making him come and give his own career. He, he has eulogy. files of every eulogy. Yeah. He's, he's and ever and now they're making him give his own eulogy at this. Uh, convention. I mean, you have to give uh, one. It's best that you get to give your own. Yeah, I guess. I, I am anxious to see how they handle it. It's a sticky wicket. I mean, he was bullied out of this race after 52 years of service to the Democratic Party, and it wasn't all about his age. He was unpopular. He was going to lose. It was Afghanistan. It was inflation. It was immigration. And now, uh, and he had to be dragged out by the fingernails. I'm sorry. This is yeah. not, so, he's not here in a happy yeah. moment okay we'll, i know we'll th we'll this see. this yarn that's being spun in this hall that he was popular and selfless and handing on no no no. it is the opposite and everybody knows it and yet the democrats are engaging in this this theater of looking at the cameras again. and saying it so it's not true yeah. yeah this yarn that is being spun in this hall i mean how much more can you say i mean and and the thing I believe is this, look at how they treated Joe Biden. I mean, I don't agree with the man. I've said many things that everybody knows where I stand on the man's character and his life. But if you look at the way that they executed him, the way they summarily cut him out of his career and without any benefit of the constitution or electoral process, the way it's supposed to be done legally, it wasn't done. He was just replaced. Then they waited to what? Wasn't it 11 o'clock at night before they let him speak? Yes. I mean, yes, I, 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 guess, I guess they were they were bidding for another senior moment, and we'll see that one in, in a second. But the fact of the matter is, here's a man that, according to them, was all of this and all the accolades. So... Here is the convention, folks. While they're saying the best things you ever heard about me, they're stabbing me in the back. I'm being complimented as I'm being stabbed in the back. And that will be our next four years. That's mm. how we're going to be treated. The way they treated Biden in this convention is the way they're going to treat us. And they're going to treat our children. That's why we're in a war and it's close. But I believe that we have got to keep our foot on the gas. But I want to ask you a question before we get any further. I think yeah. one of the most dangerous statements, and it's, I'm going to lose some folks on this one, so you're going to have to help me here, Todd. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is this idea, this election is in the hands of God. Mm. Now, I'm going to read a comment that somebody left at my blog. Don't worry about who is president, said this Christian. The word says we make our plans, but it is the Lord who controls the decision. Mm. Remember, God is in control. Just pray his will and watch him work. All right, that sounds right, doesn't it? I'll give you first shot. I've got a bunch on that, but I'll wow. give you first shot. Talk about opening a can of worms here. I got a lot to say on that, Mario, because that's something I hear a lot too. You know, here's the, here's the thing. The children of Israel, if you think about it, they were beloved by the Lord. There's chosen people. But when they got away from worshiping the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they started worshiping idols. What, what did God allow to happen? They were brought into captivity multiple times. Multiple times the temple was destroyed. Wait a minute, Todd. You're, you're talking about the Jewish people. Yes, God's beloved, first to the Jew, then the Gentile. Now, we know that in the New Testament, we're grafted in the vine. But the bottom line is this is a, a biblical uh, 
you know, matter of fact, it's, there's no question here that God allows nations to go into captivity. He allows people to go into captivity. And then he uses that for his glory. When they return to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, when they go to second Chronicles seven fourteen, if my people who are called by my name, humble themselves and pray and seek my face. And then, then what happens is God restores. So, uh, you know, faith without works is dead. And a lot right. of people, th- this is the problem. And I think, I think, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, Mario. I know you're about to speak about this. And of course, God can do anything. But if you look at the scripture, every time right. it's, you know, it's, it's the same thing. I know you got a lot to say on this, Mario. No, no, I don't want to rush you because uh, we both got to get this point across. That, that comment sounded right, didn't it? But God is all powerful. There's comfort in thinking that he will decide the outcome of the election but it is simply not the case. And it's a work of Satan to drive the church away from voting. That's what it's for. You're not going to vote because of this belief that the, the election is in God's hands and it couldn't be more opposite than that. Mm. Not only is this view, the most dangerous cop out the church has ever seen the verse that they're referring to in in Proverbs, he, he misquoted Proverbs 16, 1, the preparations of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. So what he said is decision. He said the decision is from the Lord. And the Bible doesn't say that. It says the answer is from the Lord. It is how that works. What we see in this verse is a heart trying to find the answer. He's praying. Asking God, what do I do? What is the thing I do? That's what Proverbs 16, 1 is, the preparations of the heart. A heart is looking for an answer. What we see in this verse is a heart trying to find the answer. That answer will always lead to action. God will never give you direction without instructions to act. So the passivity of the man's remarks are what's dangerous. The person who wrote this comment said the Lord controls the decision. They've confused the answer with the decision. The answer is indeed from the Lord, but the decision is ours. Hmm. And the Bible makes this very plain in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive them of their sin and heal their land. God said, if my people, it didn't say, if I want to as God, it said, if my people, Satan wants us to assume that America is in God's hands. It makes the work easy for the devil. He can score victories with no resistance. And that's, Mm amazing to understand. So I want to quote something that Arthur Matthews said, because this great author, this Christian missionary faced the same exact situation before. And he exposed this lie when he said this, when the pressure for action is on the attitude of faith, justifying its hesitation to act argues this way. God is omniscient and sovereign. He's in control of this world and has allowed this to happen. It would be presumptuous of us to do more than just put our trust in him and let him work out the circumstances in his way and in his time. That's what he's absolutely exposing. We don't do that. Even the person's prayer are misguided. Each, they even mock God. According to them, all we have to do is pray perfunctory prayers that rubber stamp God's will. No way. We are in war. We are to war in prayer, folks. This is the lie that killed Germany. While there was still time when they had the power, they did nothing to stop Hitler from coming to power. Now, no sane Christian believes Hitler was God's will for Germany. Nobody. Remember how many Lutheran pastors played that God's got this tune to the German church about Hitler. Then it was too late for them to act. And I'm telling you, we're running out of time as a nation. We're running out of time as a people. You got to look every leader who preaches. This is all in God's hand. You got to see them as being under a delusion that is working into the hands of the enemy. Christians that are complacent 
are even, and I, I, I really feel the most important thing that I've said here is the way it affects how we pray. We've got to get into warfare praying and to say, I bind these devils, turn their counsel into foolishness, expose the Kamala agenda for what it is, a curse on the modern American future. That's what it is. And that's, and I really believe that's what we got to do. And that's what we got to tell our friends. Todd? Yes. There's so many profound things that have been said that you just said, Mario, we really got to think about this because what you just said, you, you mentioned uh, Nazi Germany and what happened in Germany. This We're literally seeing, the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. We're literally seeing a buildup of like 1930s Germany right now. And a lot of folks say, that can never happen here. There's something called a normalcy bias. That can never happen in America. You know, and there's a lot of folks saying these types of things. Friends, think about just if you went back 30 years uh, from, you know, go and, and looked at America now, what you would think. What you would think if there was these gender surgeries that they're doing. What you would think about some of the policies that are being enacted around our country, especially in California and New York and places like that. Imagine it, what your grandparents would have thought. You know, the ones that fought in the greatest generation, World War II. You know, what they would have thought of what's going on right now in American politics. Even the Kennedy Democrats would be appalled to see the state of the Democrat Party right now. And there's nothing we can align with. And you mentioned a few things, Mario, that really made me think about character. You know, the, the Bible says you know them by their fruit. Here's a group of folks that are literally throwing the president. The president of the United States, we just got to think about this, came to speak at the Democrat National Convention. And, and, and they put him in the late night slot. To hoping that the least amount of people would see the president of the United States speak. That's profound. A guy that they literally remember the paper that came yeah. out. I think it was on X and it was supposedly Joe Biden saying that he was exiting the race. Wrong signature, different signature, according to many people, wasn't on an official White House letterhead. And then you heard all the back, you know, the behind the scenes stuff saying, you know, Biden didn't want to come out. His wife didn't want him to come out. There was a battle. And it was even brought up on that CNN uh, broadcast we just showed a few minutes ago in the Democrat Party. And now they're trying to come out and pretend like none of these things happen. It's an illusion. It's an it's all an illusion. And this is why we as believers, we've got to have discernment. And that's going to come in our prayer time and in revelation of the Holy Spirit. When we get into the Bible and we start, we, we look at these things in the spirit. And I think this is the problem, Mario, because you mentioned the preachers that are willing to sit there and not say anything or just positive things, yep. listen, you're going to have to stand before the throne, okay? We love you. We're not here to attack you, but the deal is, is everybody's going to have to stand before the throne. Imagine 10 years from now, our nation goes through a major shift, and some of the things that we're talking about today happen, okay? We didn't do enough. We didn't push back. The church is still going to be here until we get raptured out of here, okay? But the bottom line is America has not promised the same freedoms. So there's a, there's no. a difference between the church and America, and that's what we have to understand, I believe, Mario. Yeah, you know, uh, two guys were arguing on the internet about their favorite uh, situation comedy on TV. And one thought, this is a great comedy. The other guy said, they're not even funny. They're not funny, and you don't know it. And so what he did is he got a copy of one of the shows with the laugh track removed. So you played it and you saw the characters saying the punchlines to each other without audience reaction. And I watched it and I was shocked. It was not funny. It was not funny at all. See, in the Democratic Party right now has a laugh track, a real loud laugh track. And they're hoping that you think they're funny and you think they're joyous. What are you going to do about inflation? No. Turn up the laugh track. What are you going to do about national defense? Turn up the laugh track whenever substance. And here's the key. The media is protecting her, yeah. keeping her. And, and we're going to hear, uh, we're going to see another video and we're going to comment on it. But I want you to hold that thought about the laugh track because I think I'm going to come back to it right after this video. Let's, let's run it right now. It is decision over turning Roe v. Wade, as you heard earlier tonight. The United States Supreme Court majority wrote the following, quote, women are not without electrical, not, not allowed, not without electoral, electoral, 
or political power. No kidding. MAGA Republicans found out the power of women in 2022. And Donald Trump is going to find out the power of women in 2024. Okay, my heart goes out to that man. I, I don't want to, you know, I feel horrendous. You know, you're watching elder abuse right there. But the point I want to make is you saw when he fumbled and he said about women being electrical. Uh, he nodded to the crowd, turn up the laugh track, the cheering, bring wow. it in, cover me. And and really, that's that's where we're at. That's what's going on. And, and so substantively, the media does not want Kamala Harris to um, in any way, shape or form, embarrass herself by being out there talking about policy. What are you going to do about the border? Let's just take this example. OK, I'm going to stay with the. I'm going to wear out this laugh track analogy, aren't I, Todd? Uh, <laughs> do it. If I'm elected, I will solve the border crisis. You are the border czar, possessing currently the power to fix the border, and you're not doing it. So there's two lies there. Number one, you lied when you took the oath of office and said you were going to stop the nut, the insanity at the border. Number two, you're lying now by saying if you're elected, if you have the power to fix it and you won't, what tells us that when you're elected that you will? This is the laugh track, the cackle that covers it. It's the thing that does it. You see what I'm saying, Todd? So, so important that people understand what you're saying. I do see what you're saying. You know, I was thinking about something, Mario, in the height of the Cold War when Ronald Reagan was president in the, in the 80s. Uh, he was able to to look at the poker face of Gorbachev. He he knew that the Soviet Union was about to crumble. But if you if you looked at it from the outside, uh, it didn't look like that. You know, it, you couldn't really tell there was blood in the water. If the Democrat Party loses this election, think of the peril that the Democrat Party is going to be in. I mean, everything that's happened, even this year, what they did to their actual nominee, where they replaced and put in someone that wasn't even voted in. And, 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 you know, like you said, the laugh track is playing and everybody's like trying to play this thing out and it's the illusion. But can you imagine for a minute Donald Trump comes in with the decisive victory, even with all the nonsense and shenanigans? This party is going to be like uh, the Soviet Union when it crumbled, when it fell. And I really believe that's a real possibility. And this is where we need to be like Reagan right now and see through the lies and the illusion because they're trying to portray strength. But the bottom line is they don't have any character. They don't have fruit because the Bible says you know them by their fruit. Their fruit is all bad. Okay. They have no policy, no agenda. To your point, it's all just a laugh track. And you take that track away and you got a, a very sad situation of elder abuse and a man that was just robbed of his position, uh, but strongholded by the people who are really running the party. And you got a woman who's never won a primary who she is a laugh track. I mean, that's all she does is laugh. Am I, am I missing something here, Mario? Nope, you're not. And I tell you what, we got to run uh, another video here because we're getting into it now, son. We're getting into it. So let's <laughs> let's run this next video right here. You should note that one of what one of the dynamics that is going on, and this is going to be a night, obviously, uh, where there is a, an, an homage uh, to President Biden. And we just heard Vice President Harris talk yeah. about thanking him and how important he has been to this country and to this party. But one of the issues is that for the last year, as people geared up for the 2024 race, uh, the candidates were in the minds of Democrats, one, one candidate, the Republican, who would come out and offend them, and the other candidate, their candidate, the Democrat, Joe Biden, who would come out and they would sit on the edge of their seat and hope that he didn't say something meandering or off message or adult and that fear about their nominee speaking is gone now they have somebody who uh 
I mean, it is does project joy. And they're, they're not particularly subtle about how they want the message of this convention to be joy, but she does project joy with a with a with her smile and her tone and her mien. And she's not somebody that, uh, in a situation like this, is going to cause Democrats that tension that we used to feel uh, in the media and uh, all Americans when the president would come out and speak. Yeah, exactly. That's sort of. Wait, what? <laughs> wait, wait. She's not going to cause any embarrassment by what she says? You know, Biden had the excuse of dementia. Kamala right. has none. So when she's unburdened by the things of the past and she's talking about the yellow bus and she's, she's saying things in her word salad, I, I can't believe that Jake Tapper said that. I can't. And, and this is like, folks, I want you to look at me. I'm Jake Stapper, Tapper, excuse me. <laughs> and you all are so stupid and so malleable and so deranged by the hatred of the orange man that we can sit here and tell you that Kamala Harris is going to be an articulate, eloquent, understandable speaker. And she's never going to embarrass. He went out of his way to emphatically. They're never going to be nervous about her in a situation like this. A few days ago, someone asked her, don't you think that Israel should be disarmed? And she said, we should have a conversation about that. Wow. The moment she said it. They pulled her away from the microphone and the White House is issuing a statement. This is not what we believe. We are not going to disarm Israel. Classically, we are watching yet again one more puppet. And, and for them, I, I just can't get over it. You, you go, I'm, I'm sitting here trying to take this in, that they actually, yeah. that Jake it's Tapper <laughs> actually said that. Yeah, it's projection. Uh, talk about projection here. But th th <laughs> let's think about this. I mean, uh, you mentioned Israel. Let's talk about Israel for a second. There, there's a good portion now of the Democrat Party that is against Israel. It's, it's out in the open. It's and we know right. that Kamala Harris doesn't like Israel. We know that Barack Obama didn't like Israel much. And we know that uh, Wall certainly doesn't like Israel. And so this, this contingent, th this is the single thing that is left, I believe, in the Democrat Party that has some shred of, of, of decency is the support for Israel. The, the old school uh, Democrats, even Joe Biden's era, you know, that's one thing that all Americans pretty much agreed on. You know, and you had Elon Musk, right. he said it very, you know, and a couple other people that said, uh, I was thinking, of General Flynn just talked about this the other day too, but he said, you know, there, there's no question there. We're talking about another, mm -hmm. the other side that want to chop your head off. I mean, there's really no question as far as that. But there is in the Democrat Party. And so I want you to understand that that is the very last thing. And now they're coming for that. And you have Kamala Harris coming out and basically saying she's she's not kidding when she's saying we should talk about that. She's she's actually speaking from her mind, I believe, Mario. But the thing is, they don't want you to know that because of the illusion. They don't want you to know this is where they stand. And and the fact of the matter is the strategy here is to run out the clock. They, they, uh, I, by design, I don't believe that anything that has happened in the last several months in the DNC playbook was delayed or, or unorganized. It was completely according to plan. They wanted to put in the replacement. And what did it cost Donald Trump to campaign against a candidate, Joe Biden, who wasn't even the candidate? He, cost him $100 million that went down mm -hmm. the drain. And that's why he's suing them for that $100 million, saying this wasn't even the person I was running against. And they knew all along the moment, the perfect moment, we'll have a debate, he will completely implode, and no one will blame us for replacing him. And the delegates that he won will finally realize that it's for the greater good that we put in another person with just enough time to get them uh, liked before the convention and to run out the clock. And so now they're not going to answer your question. You're not going to hear anything of substance of what they're going to do about the budget, the economy, national security, 
the border, anything. You're not going to hear it. They're going to joy their way. It's all about joy, they're saying. And that's an insult to your intelligence. They're asking you to pick someone who's happier than the other. Vote for the happiest person, unqualified, dangerous, maybe unhinged, but happier than the other one. And I, and I feel like, you know, what can you say? That's the moment we're in. That's why the people of God have got to come together and realize this is not a political moment. It is supernaturally spiritual. It's between good and evil. And any Christian that can't understand why we have to choose the person who wants the church to thrive, who wants to protect the life of the unborn, who wants to make sure that America is economically strong. There's this, this is so obvious, it's ridiculous. That's why hypnosis is essential to make her look viable. And I think we need to run one more video because, uh, and then I want you to comment after. In fact, before we run the video, uh, speak, Todd, <laughs> say something. <laughs> Well, I just as we're thinking about all these things we're talking about here, this is how they're going to bring in the one world religion, you know, is they're going to take away yep. the the real the real Bible and the real aspects from. And if folks don't know the word, that's where the deception that's this whole thing. If you think about the church in China, the state church, I'm not talking about the underground church, but the state run church, they take out all the all the power. All, all the real, you know, Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit and everything that, you know, the signs and wonders, everything that the Lord actually te talks us, you know, about that we're going to be able to do even greater things. This is what's happened. The Democrat Party are literally lockstep with that same state version of false Christianity and any evangelical, right. okay, or leader that's willing to put their stamp of approval. I'm sorry, they're compromised. And it's time to call a spade a spade. It is compromised. If you're willing to look the other way when somebody's talking about uh, marriage this way or what they're going to do with our kids and the curriculums or the mutilation and on and on and on, abortion, my God, my God. And so this is that moment of decision, Mario. And, and we have two different paths that this country could go in. I think we got to show this last video because it's going to bring all this together, what we talked about today. Let's go ahead and run that right now. Uh, a little bit more. The fact that the media is just basically letting Kamala Harris say anything she wants and not really challenging her. I'm still amazed that when you go to her her campaign website, of course, the first thing you see is is a request for, for money, for donations. Um, that's fine, but then you travel throughout her web. There's still no policy pitches or, or explanations or details being offered to voters as to how she's going to fix <laughs> fix the problems that she's laying out in her speeches. You know, it used to be if you wanted to get a good sense of, of what the policy of the particular candidate was, you would go to their website and it would be all laid out there on a policy page in yep. great detail. That page doesn't even exist Not on there. Kamala Harris's website. Or she would give the opportunity to the press to ask questions to get clarity on some of these ideas, like price controls. That's not happening, yet at least. Yeah, you know, and uh, every once in a while they make a serious mistake, but let's, let's get back to that. There is no policy page on her website. There's none. You don't know what she's going to do to fix anything. The one things that she has allowed us to know that she is going to fix are the things that she has the power to fix now, but is not fixing. So the rest of it is this. She's getting away with no policies being articulated. And the media is running interference for her. They're not journalists. None of them are journalists. They're all in the tank. They're shills for the greatest hoax ever foisted on the American public, greater than Joe Biden. This is a hoax. And, and they're running interference so that she does not have to answer any hard questions or come up with any substantive explanation of what her presidency would look like. And that, my friend, says more about you than even it does about them. Because if you believe as a Christian that this is okay, that this means and way of running a campaign is okay, there's something seriously wrong with you. And 
you can look your children in the eye and ask yourself, what am I doing to be diligent to understand what the choices are and what the future holds? This is why firepower sometimes has to be this way. Sometimes there shouldn't be a jolly ending to a show. Sometimes there shouldn't be like, woo, woo, everything. No, sometimes there needs to be a sober moment, a sobering moment where we finally realize what is our duty. Our duty at this point is to pray fiery prayers. Our duty at this time is to influence our Christian friends. And I want to make one comment, and I'm, I'm throwing it to you. I promised I would, and I didn't, and I'm sorry. Okay. The Johnson Amendment is dead, Pastor. The Church of God in Christ killed it. They killed it. Bishop Sheard went on record. We as a church are endorsing Kamala Harris. The IRS says you can't do that if you're a 501c3. Can't do it. He did it. Do you believe the IRS is going to go after the Church of God in Christ? No, they are not. So every one of you pastors out there, black, white, Asian, I don't care about your color. You are being silent, using the Johnson Amendment as an excuse. You now have incontrovertible proof that the IRS is not going to shut down your church for endorsing a candidate for president. So if you've been hiding behind that, start. If you belong to a church where your minister has said, I will not do it because I'll lose my nonprofit status, that is a moot point. It is a dead argument. It doesn't exist. It is classically one, one more piece of camouflage has been torn off this war, and it's time to speak out. Go ahead, Todd. I a lot of quotables. A lot of quotables tonight. You need to go back and get some of these quotes because they're good ones. Uh, let me just end with this. Trust your discernment. Trust that still small voice from the Holy Spirit. Get into the word more than ever. Get fresh revelation. Put on the armor of God and know that the devil is up to his same old tricks, trying to lie and deceive. And we've got to understand there is an illusion, but we are on the winning team and we've got to act like winners. We have authority in Jesus name to pull down the strongholds. And so uh, with that being said, I want to pray here in just a second. Before I do that, Mario, you're going to be coming to my, ch my church uh, this weekend. And if you're anywhere near the Tennessee area and you're able to make it out, uh, I want to mention that. Yeah, I yes. want to comment on that. Go ahead, okay. Go ahead comment. Todd Coconado has done the impossible. <laughs> He's gotten me to preach in the Nashville area, which I have not done. I've been living here three years. I'm never, uh, I, I just avoid preaching here. But this time, I believe it's God's timing. So I think that Sunday night uh, on the 25th of August, we're going to be there. Tell them where we're going to be. We're going to have a night of miracles. That's all. Yeah. That, straight night up. Night of miracles right here in Hendersonville. It's about 20 minutes north of downtown Nashville. You can just Google Todd Coconado Church. It'll come up on Google Maps. Get out there. Uh, Mario's going to be preaching at 5, but we definitely say get there early because uh, you're going to need to save some seats. It's going to be a good night. And Mario, thank you for coming out. I, I really believe the Lord's given him a very powerful word to share, very now word. And uh, with that being said, I, I want to just pray, Lord. We just thank you so much. <laughs> bước vô một cái diện có thể là kéo miễn hoặc là kéo sát ở đây thì phần hoa mình sẽ chuẩn bị phần dãy màu áp bụng ở đây mình sẽ có hai phần dãy hình vuông với kích thước mỗi cành tầm 12 cm và một phần dãy hình vuông với kích thước nhỏ hơn tầm 8 cm một phần À, dễ ra để làm phần mì hoa bây giờ mình sẽ hướng dẫn cho các bạn cách cắt một cạnh hoa cút tạm cạnh cách đều ở đây thì ở ngoài chúng ta sẽ có tất cả là ba lớp cạnh hoa hai cạnh hoa to và một cạnh hoa nhỏ bây giờ mình sẽ tiến hành cắt cạnh hoa đầu tiên 
với hình vuông ban đầu thì mình sẽ bắt đầu gấp ba lần hình tam giác sau đó chúng ta sẽ dùng kẹo cắt tạo hình một cạnh hóa khuyết Nếu chúng ta có thể cắt theo tạo hình đầu trái tim với ngọn điều của hai bên ta khi mở ra thì chúng ta sẽ có một cạnh hóa có tám nhẫn nhỏ mỗi nhẫn đều có phần khuyết ở trên tiếp theo mình sẽ cắt với ba phần nhẫn còn lại về phần màu sắc thì chúng ta có thể biến tẩu hoa màu những các màu màu nhẹ khác nhau thì sẽ, sẽ làm cho hoa chúng ta thêm phần sinh động hơn ở đây mình chỉ dùng một màu các bạn có thể à, phá các màu như là vàng hồng trắng xanh xen lại vào nhau <cười> 